A very happy morning to all. I believe that you all stay safe and healthy. I am Saravana Kumar, Assistant Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. And it is a great pleasure to say a few words about our college and our department. Francis Heavy Engineering College is located at Thermal Valley City and it was established in the year 2000. FX Engineering College comes under a scant group of institutions. Our institution has been offered autonomous status in the year 2019. We offer 6 UG programs and 10 PG programs have scholars carrying out doctoral studies in our research centers. Our college has achieved many awards. Among all, I would like to list a few to your knowledge. We have got gold category for Industry Linkery Technical Institute which was awarded by AICTE CII survey for two consecutive years 2018 and 2019. In Chronicle Engineering College survey, we achieved third position among 19 engineering colleges in India. In Times Best Engineering College survey, our college has obtained 15th rank in Tamil Nadu and 108th rank in India. The Department of Mechanical Engineering is the largest department on campus with 600 plus students, 35 faculty members and with good infrastructure facilities. We offer BE in Mechanical Engineering and ME in Industrial Safety Engineering. The UG program is aggregated by NBA, the National Board of Aggregation. Apart from course defined curriculum, we offer a number of value added courses and impart various skill training to the students. In addition to well equipped laboratories, and that comes under curriculum, we have a few special labs for encouraging innovation and product development. We also have a strong academy for training students to appear for gate exams. Our department has signed many MOU with leading manufacturing and service industries. We also offer international certificate program on phonics CNC programming, computer aided design, non-destructive testing and BMW Hyundai Associated Industry Associated Laboratories. Our students are actively participating in many technical competitions, winning prizes and bring laurels to our department. The research area of our faculty members are bioenergy, combustion, solar desalination, green manufacturing, waste heat recovery, biomass gasification and composite materials. We have also organized many international conferences, workshops and funded seminars. With this introduction, I welcome all the participants for this session and hope we will have a great learning today. Thank you. Good morning to all. It's a time for introducing our speaker today, Mr. J. Anto Siroj Singh Sijo, Senior Planning Engineer, NSH Corporation, Saudi Arabia. He has completed B. Mechanical Engineering in the year 2008 from RVS College of Engineering and Technology, Tindical. After his graduation, he has joined GB Engineering Enterprises Private Limited, Trichy, the manufacturer and supplier of evaporator, economizer coils, etc. He worked as a project engineer for four and a half years till January 2013. After that, he have joined NSH Corporation, Saudi Arabia and worked as a planning engineer for five and a half years. Mr. Anto Siroj Singh Sijo is a highly enthusiastic and result driven professional. So he got promoted as a senior planning engineer. Until now, he has worked for many international clients. And we are very happy to have him as a speaker for our technical webinar today. Thank you so much. Good morning. Welcome you all for the webinar on uh, insight into piping construction in petrochemical industry. And I thank the France Xavier Engineering College Management for giving me an opportunity to present this webinar on an insight into piping construction in petrochemical industry. I would uh, uh, present this as a it will be like a virtual tour of the process involved in the construction of uh, petrochemical and uh, petrochemical pipelines. And I have uh, prepared this presentation, keeping in mind the uh, B engineer who is in his in final year or uh, third year. Uh, it will be a sort of a basics and the process involved in this uh, pipelines. And uh, some of the people who are viewing this might have some uh, industrial experience and this uh, piping construction. Uh, and uh, you may know some of the aspects of this uh, presentation. 
and some upon for some or most of the people viewing this it will be a new experience or of of, of this uh, construction part so moving on and i would like to start this presentation with a safety moment and uh, so everyone is aware that uh, we are and you are experiencing what's going around us in this uh, turbulent times of the pandemic uh, that we are witness witnessing right now and experiencing and uh, what to what to say else uh, you have to come over this and uh, as a safety precaution we have to uh, wash our hands frequently at least for a period of uh, 20 seconds uh, and then cover your faces with a tissue paper while you cough or sneeze and dispose dispose them immediately and in case of a uh, cough or sneeze uh, close your uh, mouth with your elbow or a uh, tissue paper and uh, avoid touching your uh, ha- uh, mouth or nose with your hands and uh, maintain a social distance as instructed by the government and Uh, WHO and isolate and stay home and uh, in case of any symptoms report to the nearest medical center and get treated and uh, that will be our uh, safety moment for this uh, webinar and moving on to the main part that is the uh, construction overview as a project let me start off with the how a project is being executed in general it will be a general view now uh, a yeah, government or an uh, entity or a company who wants to construct a pipeline or a petrochemical plant he approaches an epcm company or a consultant the epcm company or a consultant is nothing but an uh, engineering procurement construction and management company so when a owner decides to construct a pipeline he a petrochemical plant he approaches a epcm company with this budget with this requirements and what's the product that he is going to plan to manufacture and uh, the epcm consultant takes the inputs from the owner of the plant that's the company it may be a company or a government and he works out on the budget what the owner uh, has uh, defined and the requirements and he gets back to the owner that this is the thing and we can do this in uh, this particular period and this these are the resources and uh, this much duration and uh, upon deciding up of other all other factors financial and technical the construction phase will be started off it will be started off with the uh, <coughs> Uh, consultant or the company apcm company uh, he he cannot take up all the activities on his own for example uh, engineering engineering part most of the companies they are a consultant they will be able to execute it by themselves they have an engineering and research development team so they can do it and the procurement part they will be procuring all the materials for required for this project that's the main construction materials and the construction part when it comes to the construction part most of the companies or uh, epcm companies they will not be able to execute the project on their own that's a construction part they may go for a uh, contractor or a construction company who is specialized in construction so a contractor or a construction company has uh, the resources that's a huge amount of resources might be required for the construction of a huge scale projects which may require a period of 5 years or something so in such a case the resources required may be huge in terms of manpower equipment so a epcm company may not be able to, may not be i say it may not be. most cases it will given to a construction company uh, that uh, there's a contractor uh, contractor takes up the construction part so the uh, uh, engineering might be given to a uh, another contractor or it may be it's executed by the con- company or consultant itself so when it comes to the construction part it, it may be handed over it to a construction contractor and the construction contractor he might not be able to execute the whole uh, scale of the pro- uh, whole project on on his own he may require some subcontractor for example some painting of this pipes 
or maybe some insulation activities he may go for a subcontractor so the subcontractor and apart from that some vendors may be required because the main construction materials may be purchased by epcm company but some uh, consumables required for the construction company to construct these pipelines it may be a filler wire electrode or a grouting material such things has to be purchased so here the construction contractor approaches the uh, vendor or a supplier and the inspection agencies these inspection agencies are required for the uh, these are these may be the third party inspection agencies who might be appointed by the epcm company or the construction company itself and these epc inspection companies uh, might be responsible for the some inspection activities like nde or calibration of the instruments to be used in the construction site and the logistics company the logistics company is indirectly involved with this project indirectly means yes he will be in uh, he will be involved in transportation of this materials or resources it might he might be appointed by the epcm company for uh, transportation of the materials what is procured by them or by the construction company or a contractor uh, who uh, up, uh, uh, places the orders on this uh, construction companies for transportation of these materials to construction site now having an idea of uh, project participants involved in this uh, in a project and it's a general view now we will move on to the project challenges what are the challenges in general we face in a construction site uh, see as a construction site it's a huge thing it's a huge uh, area and vast uh, multiple contractors might be involved in a construction site uh, uh, when we take a petrochemical plant a petrochemical plant as civil activities uh, mechanical activities piping and related activities instrumentation activities electrical activities now what we are concentrating here is piping purely on piping but apart from piping you have multiple activities and multiple contractors involved in a uh, construction of pipeline or a petrochemical construction plant construction so there should be a coordination between these contractors or multiple uh, construction companies involved in a cons uh, plant construction or a piping pipeline construction so in case there is any differences in the coordination it will be a miss and another thing is the sequential release of work fronts see as the petrochemical plant you will have various areas within that plant uh, it may be a, uh, for example let's say it's a cooling tower it a uh, heat exchanger uh, so multiple areas involved within the plant and the uh, work front release for these construction companies or contractors must be in a such a way that it as planned by the epcm company if there is no sequential work front things are going to be a mess and uh, accordingly the contractor has to plan his resources because the uh, resources what we refer are uh, in general manpower machinery and material uh, the contractor is ready with the resources and the contract uh, epcm company doesn't release the work from some time then it will be a huge loss for a construction contractor so that's the thing and uh, logistics from off site to on site that is the transportation of the materials from the supplier or a manufacturing plant or uh, from a subcontractor site to the site to the construction site these are uh, when i say these things what there are multiple challenges in this that's why i am saying about these things are challenges in when you take a logistics you will be transporting a material from or or a airlifting a material from a, another country and when you when this transportation things are being done you have to look after various factors documents and it has to be delivered on time so these are challenges some of the challenges you will be facing as a construction project okay. and sequence of work 
uh, you plan a activity let's say you plan a erection of a pipeline in a particular area and uh, you have some pipes pools to be erected and uh, there is a isometric drawing so you refer to the isometric drawings for construction and you have a pipeline and you have a spool one and you have a spool three and you have a spool two and the spool two has not been received at site what is the you don't have a continuation so the continuation is disturbed likewise you have a civil act you have a pipeline to be erected and it's to be erected on a structure and the structure is not ready and your pipeline or piping materials are to be erected your sequence is affected so the sequence of the work has to be planned up like that and there should not be any uh, hindrances in the sequence of work if your sequence is disturbed things are going to be bad and like i said before continuity of pipe poles that is uh, when you go laying a pipeline the continuity should be there if your pipe poles are missing or not delivered from your fabrication shop then it's going to be a problem for you your uh, resources are going to be idle uh, you will be shifting your construction to another area so uh, ultimately you are losing your productivity okay. now the next thing is uh, positioning of the cranes and optimization and quality document interface for mechanical completion and dossier submission in a timely manner these are some of the project challenges that you will be facing in a pipeline construction or in general any construction project and here in a petrochemical industry uh, you need to know how the uh, quantity of work is or volume of work is quantified for example let's say it's a petrochemical plant construction and you have various disciplines as i said earlier civil steel structure piping equipments uh, electrical instrumentation like this so civil uh, see uh, civil you have a thousand hundred and fifty thousand m cube of concrete works and steel structure 55,000 metric ton of steel structure and uh, piping you have a 1.8 million inch day of metallic and 0.9 million inch day of non-metallic piping building in in world okay and equipment which means a static or rotary equipment and you have some 30,000 metric ton of static or rotary equipment to be erected and the uh, ENT electrical and instrumentation cable you may have some 7500 kilometers of electrical cable to be erected or laid and painting you may have some 5.5 million meter square of painting activities involved and coming to the man manpower you will have some 30,000 or 20,000 manpower involved in a particular project this is how your volume of volume or a value of a volume of a project is being quantified now as you see on the screen that you have a estimated man hours that is uh, some 35 million man hours 35 million man what man hours coming to man hours man hours so how it's being measured uh, say you have a labor or a worker working on a construction site he works for 10 hours a day and you have 10 labors so uh, you have 10 manpower for working for 10 hours okay for 10 days how much 10 into 10 into 10 thousand man hours like this how many manpower you have planned for the project maybe a 35 million 25 million or 2 million 3 million it's based on the volume of the project okay now what you will see on the screen here is a uh, weightage of each discipline this only sample yeah, this may vary based on the project scope and the type of the project it varies i have seen then petrochemical uh, plant construction it may be civil contributes to 36 percentage weightage of the project the entire will contribute five percentage structural steel will be eight percentage uh, painting may contribute to three percentage and piping may contribute to 48 percentage of your activity 
this man hours this man hours is the in this aspect or this factor uh, this measurement or say this measurement will be the base for calculating your progress that's a planned progress this is actual progress so what is a planned progress you have to plan your activities uh, for a period of three or five years so each period uh, by the end of one year you might have achieved this much progress or a one and a half years or a period of 24 months you should be able to complete the project so you say it's a 12 month project and you have planned to complete 60 percentage of the project by the period of uh, maybe seven months or six months or seven months so you have a plan so planned process progress and against that planned progress how much you have achieved these things are being calculated from this manuals that is against this manuals all these workouts are being done and what you see on a screen is a general layout layout means it's not a layout it's a 3d it's taken from a 3d model and this is a plant it's a part of a plant it's only a part of a plant it's not a plant it's a part of a plant you see areas being uh, segregated and uh, shown area one area two area three area four area five so having said that uh, the uh, challenges faced in a construction project and uh, the things so uh, in general now we'll move on uh, to the various disciplines or the departments uh, involved in the construction project uh, you what you see on the screen is a basic uh, flow chart how a construction project is being executed with various uh, involving various departments we have a epcm contractor uh, sorry consultant on the top and a construction company who has taken up the construction activities and the construction uh, company which is being uh, uh, control uh, or the project, uh, project manager uh, on behalf of the construction company who has, take, uh, who is, who has overall control over this project and a site manager uh, who will be reporting to the project manager and you have the various disciplines admin, project planning uh, pro or project control uh, construction department and a QQC department and the uh, equipment uh, department will be supporting this uh, project with the materials required for the project and you have a, a material store who controls over the material and distribution and seeing over the admin department you will have the equipment and uh, human resource uh, departments which will be who will be reporting to the admin department uh, the equipment department will be uh, charged for the, all the equipments that is uh, machineries, uh, maybe a lifting or a shifting equipment, so their uh, mobilizations and the maintenance, everything. And human resource or HR department will be in charge of the manpower and their, uh, what's it, the rail governance and uh, project planning or a project control department which will be which will be a it's like a heart of the project because they will be applying all the resources required for the project material takeoffs and uh, release of drawings for the site and this from where you control the whole project uh, they have to plan the construction uh, sequence uh, schedules material approval and uh, pro daily progress and uh, finally invoicing the quantities at a month end of a month and you have a uh, planning engineers uh, quantity surveyors document controller it's a part of the planning department and uh, civil uh, discipline wise uh, construction departments uh, that is a civil piping uh, or a e and i department 
this paper uh, this uh, each department will be headed by a construction manager and the construction manager reporting to the site managers and you have a qqc department uh, the qqc engineers who do the daily inspections at site preparation of quality plan and uh, materials inspection and qqc document uh, preparation and uh, they will be headed by a qqc manager reporting to the site manager or project manager so and uh, there will be a hsc department looking after uh, the health safety of the uh, people involved in the project so this will this is the general view of a uh, uh, or a uh, flow chart of a construction site so having said that now let's move on to the planning part of this project so the main thing uh, coming to the planning part is you have to be on time you have to deliver the project on time within the cost uh, when you fail to execute the project within time your cost is automatically going to increase the end of the day be it a subcontractor or a contractor or a epcm or a owner of a plant it's all about money no one wants to execute a project or run a company for loss so you have to be on time plan your activities plan your resources complete it on time make profit that's it now this is a construction schedule what you see on screen and uh, here you have uh, activities being listed here listed here these are this is only a basic uh, you can say it's a baseline base schedule uh, when you go to uh, primero software and uh, uh, schedule a project uh, you have multiple levels say it's a uh, level 1 level 1 schedule level 2 schedule level 3 schedule level 4 schedule what is the, what are these levels level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 Level level one will be a basic schedule, executive schedule. You can say it's a executive schedule. And level two would be a little bit detailed, and level three, the level goes on level from level two to level three. It will be more detailed. Level three to level four it will be in detail of each activity. So it's a in a particular area. Say it's a cooling tower or a particular area it will be detailed as civil you will have multiple disciplines civil mechanical uh, electrical and in civil you have multiple activities these activities will be detailed in a level four schedule now what you see here can be said it's a level one schedule only thing is you will be having a start date finish date when the construction starts when the construction finish and the piping civil activities when you start finish electrical activities when you start finish and pre commissioning activities when you start finish you don't have the areas listed out here and the areas doesn't you don't see a area being break broken up into three or multiple disciplines those things you don't see here that will be you can get it from only from a level three or level four schedule this is only a level one schedule prepared on an excel sheet this is not a piece of schedule basic schedule will be of a different thing just for your understanding we have kept a excel schedule it will be easy for everyone's understanding so you have activities and your start date finish date and the now having said about this uh, schedule and now you see the resources planned and the duration see a project being executed for a period of uh, nine months from uh, august to april you have a uh, uh, resource plan here that is for a civil how much manpower you have planned uh, starting from the month one that is from September you, the bottom table you will see 32, 84, 63, 43 these are the manpowers that we have planned for the discipline civil now you go to the piping structural electrical you see the manpower there and the total manpower required for the 
that is the labor part that is 32 142 and the staff and the total manpower is 73 195 198 224 that's what you've shown being it's being shown in the graph for the month of september you require total man manpower of 73 for and when you plan the resources the construction company has to see that the resource plan is being met and the epcm contract epcm consultant has to be make sure that he does plan the uh, priority uh, sorry plan the work, uh, work front release as per his plan or his priority so that the manpower that is being planned by the construction contractor doesn't lie idle at in at any stage of the project so now uh, the manpower is being planned now oh, this is this just a plan of an equipment how what are the equipments will be required for the construction of a project and the, say the duration from the duration of august to may what are the equipments how many equipments are required for each month it's being planned so now moving on to the project esco esco what is this an esco here you see a x y axis and the curve in the form of a yes you can see this is nothing but a progress what you what planned progress for a duration of the project starting from the start to the end that is from zero percentage to hundred uh, percentage the monthly how much you have planned percentage like I said earlier the man man hours this will be the base for this calculation of this S curve or plotting this S curve so now you see an S curve being plotted on the screen this is only a plan against this plan you will be plotting an actual curve which means actual progress will be plotted uh, when you take an S curve during the course of the project you will be able to know whether the project is progressing as per the plan it's being it's delayed or it's ahead of the plan and uh, executive person or a pro project head or a owner of a company will be able to know the uh, at which stage we are whether we are delayed or we are ahead from this S curve now, these are some of the documents which are which will maybe which will be required for the uh executing a project you see as you see here it's a layout of a, a temporary facilities and uh, you have to prepare on uh, documents uh, for uh, which means an id documents for uh, execution of this project id of the persons involved in this project uh, and uh, submission of documents for vehicle and equipment inspection and your execution plan for a uh, construction and your quality plan for the project you will have a method statement inspection test plans you will have some uh, material storage and handling procedures HSC plan job safety analysis and uh, materials what you are going to procure for this project has to be approved by your uh, owner of the plant or the uh, EPCM kind of contractor or sorry consultant and the construction schedule this will be the main basic documents which you will you, you should you, uh, keep ready before start of a construction project now let's move on to the construction execution part this you will have a general organization layout how a project is being headed or being run what who are the main executive people who are involved in the project you will have a project manager site manager reporting to a project manager you will have a HSC manager QA QC project control manager admin manager construction manager for each discipline and a material manager this will be a basic layout and uh, there will be multiple engineers and officers and superintendent supervisors reporting to you reporting to their department heads and now moving on to the execution strategy uh, see 
when a construction site starts there will be a multiple people who are coming inside a site uh, he may be a, a worker he may be a trained technician but he has to know about the construction site what are the what what's what's the plant and uh, what type of construction is being carried out here so uh, he may be a different nationality working now is going to work in a different country the country has might have some different culture everything has to be uh, he should be trained in such a way that he is aware of the uh, uh, construction site and the safety requirements and he will be given some hse and if required some skill uh, trade related uh, training uh, maybe a pipe fitter he might have some experience but he may be lagging in some areas or he may not be able to achieve the productivity what the contractor expects so he will be going for some type of training so some uh, on site training facilities will be there and the execution part you should have a interface management which means the as i said earlier multiple contractors will be involved in the construction site that should be a uh, interface coordination in in case you between the contractors and between various discipline of the company involved in the construction that's what we say a high degree of interface management and focus on priority and sequence of construction to obtain necessary work friends and emphasis on achieving an effective communication among all project entities and uh, establish seamless project controls plans procedure procedure for smooth functioning management of material control and effective reconciliation and last construction manager for the respective disciplines will be a uh, will lead all the activities by coordinating with all parties like planning qqc and safety now how, let's see how a pipeline is uh, being constructed or designed and what are the components involved in a pipeline see let's see assume that we have three tanks uh, and these three tanks need to be connected for transfer of fluids or uh, uh, from one area or one tank to another for that we have to we are now placing three pipes multiple pipes are being placed here for uh, connecting these three tanks see now the uh, pipes are available the pipes are only straight pieces and uh, it may be of various sizes and various length so how these are being connected these pipelines has to be now connected so for that we bring in some fittings or we can say some branch connections so you see here now you will see some fittings being introduced that is a T, a reducer and an elbow these fittings connect these pipelines now the pipelines are connected now this has to be connected with the terminal connections of the tank that's a nozzle so you need some component that connects this pipe with the tank or the nozzle of the tank that's the terminal connection so now you see some flanges are being introduced there to connect these pipelines with the uh, equipments and some connections may be welded directly with the terminal connections that's you see two types of joints one is welded joints and one another one is flange joint so now the pipelines are connected and uh, now you have to control the flow of the fluid or the direction of the fluid now here we introduce an wall see a wall the which controls the flow of this fluid or direction of this fluid there are various types of walls as you know that's a gate globe check or butterfly wall now the pipelines is are connected the flow direction is being controlled and uh, flow is being controlled now you have to measure the flow so for measuring the flow of a liquid or the temperature of the fluid or the pressure of the fluid you need some instruments in such cases now we are going to 
play some instruments that's what you see here that's a pressure gauge or a flow meter so measure the pressure of the fluid or the flow of the fluid now pipeline has to be supported by means of a hanging support or the pipe itself will be resting on a structure or a pipe support because because of without these supports the pipelines during the course of the period that, that's a while uh, while the plant is uh, the fluids flow and the plant is in running condition the pipelines may get bent gets damaged so you require some supports that's what you see here some supports are being installed so this is how your basic piping layout will be there or a piping pipeline will be existing in a plant the pipelines are now done now the fluids get transfer, transported from one location to another and during this course of this transportation this pipe uh, the fluids that will that runs in, in inside the pipe will get affected by will get affected by the atmospheric conditions maybe the external temperatures uh, in the uh, in the atmosphere and uh, it may lose the heat heat or the cold in cold conditions uh, it may uh, the temperature of the fluid gets affected so in such cases we have to avoid these things we have apply insulation these insulations may be of a hot insulation or a cold insulation personal protection see let's see the pipe contains a hot fluid running inside the pipe and the heat needs to be preserved in such a case the hot insulation is being done okay now the temperature of the fluid is being maintained and the material or the fluid is being delivered in the required temperature and in some cases the there will be a uh, high velocity uh, high uh, huge noise being generated from the uh, fluids in such case uh, in order to reduce the noise we do some acoustic insulations that's what we say is acoustic insulation and these are the types of uh, insulation materials fibrous and uh, cellular materials there are multiple types and uh, this is a picture of an insulated pipe you have a insulation mattress and uh, over that you have some uh, vapor barriers and the cladding sheet the cladding sheet may be aluminium or SS based on the designers designer and uh, you have a binding strip to bind the pipe all over it and uh, having seen that now in general what we see in pictures or you might have uh, seen somewhere in some videos or you might have seen some above ground in some pipelines which exist above the ground but there is another category that's another classification we say it's an underground piping these underground pipings exist beneath the ground level that is we that's what we say is underground piping this underground piping and their uh, construction will, will be a little bit different from an above ground piping the basic steps in an uh, involved in underground piping or survey excavation fdt that is a field den density test bedding insulation of pipes bonding in above ground piping you do it with a welding weld joint will be done but in above uh, in a below ground that is underground piping you do bonding with the help of chemicals and then finally testing and backfilling of the underground layer pipe and this is a general uh, uh, p and id layout of a pipeline it's a 3d model let's move on to next part that is what are the types of pipelines mainly that is gathering pipeline it can be classified as gathering pipeline transportation pipeline and distribution pipeline see when a pipeline is uh, being constructed or uh, you have to see that the material uh, the or the fluid 
it's taken from its resource and being processed before being sent to its uh, destined location because whatever you get it from your resource it cannot be immediately used without processing so you gather the materials from the resources that's and the pipeline involved in this particular stage we can say it as gathering pipeline and the, during the course of the transportation you have some pipelines being construction that we can say it as a transportation pipeline and once the final product is being done it has to be distributed to its uh, end point or the uh, final customer that we can say it is a distribution pipeline so you have three main pipelines here and now let's see the various types of uh, uh, pipes and or the fittings that are required in a pipeline construction see let's see what's a pipe pipe is nothing but a tubular item it may be made of material plastic or glass and it's for conveying a liquid or a gas from one location to another and this is like a vein in our body these pipelines are like veins in our body it runs throughout the plant uh, transport for transportation of these fluids or gases now coming to the fittings part the fittings we can be we can classify the fittings into three parts that's three types that is uh, socket welded fittings screw end fittings and bevel end fittings the socket end fittings i will show you a photograph of this you will see a bulged portion here the ends the this part you will be inserting a pipe or the connecting component this and it will be a welded the in between uh, for in the gap between this uh, you see a bulge portion uh, and between this bulge uh, portion and the pipe you will be welding the you will be doing welding activity now you see a screwed fittings screwed fittings will be have a threaded ends and this threaded ends will be connected with the threaded pipes and the, finally this beveled end beveled end may be uh, j uh, it will be joined by means of a uh, welding and uh, you may have a v groove or a j groove uh, based on the thickness of the pipe and you have the reducers here reducers are uh, nothing but see you have a pipeline with the higher od and uh, the connecting pipe with the smaller od so to connect these two pipes which are of different sizes you use a reducer it may be a concentric reducer or a eccentric reducer now the elbow the pipes are in a, as, a, as you see the pipes will be of only of a straight piece now you have to change the direction of the flow in that case the elbow comes into play it may be of a 90 degree elbow or an angular elbow or a 45 degree elbow now t you have a main header pipe and there is a branch connections and for that you introduce your t there it may be of an equal t or an unequal t if the branch connection is of a smaller size then you go for an unequal t or a reducing t and the flanges gasket which comes in between the flanges and this gaskets prevents the leaking uh, leakage of fluids in between the flange connection and you have other piping components that are uh, end cap coupling plug union the end cap will be uh, used to close a vent or a drain line in a piping system and uh, coupling will be used for connecting two pipes and we have some Bullets, bullets are uh, can be used to take a branch connection from a pipeline. In case you don't have a standard reducing T, you will be going for a wallet. The wallets are of different types: weld wallet, saw wallet, elbow wallet, thread wallets. These are based on the type of connections. Uh, whether it's a welded connection or it's a threaded connection. You say it as a weld wallet or thread wallet. And these are some photographs of the wallets. And as I said, there we require some pipe supports. And these are the types of uh, pipe supports. And uh, 
close we have some walls some spectacle blinds and stud bowls this walls itself is a huge area which requires a separate presentation so we are not going in detail inside the walls okay. now uh, materials that are used that is used for a construction pipeline you have some based on the cata grades and uh, physical properties you have a carbon steel alloy steel stainless steel frp grp that is fiber reinforced plastic or uh, glass reinforced plastic pvc materials non ferrous materials like aluminium copper these are based on the flow uh, designers parameters based on the fluids that are to be handled this material is being designed or uh, identified <coughs> now having seen about the materials now comes the next one next resource that is equipments you have a lifting equipments and shifting equipments in lifting equipments we have a crawler crane a tire mounted crane or a tower crane and shifting you have trailers prime movers forklifts hydraulic platforms and other equipments maybe welding machines flame cutting sets winches and the tools that are involved uh, for the erection activities and that is the chain puller rope puller nylon rope slings bull clamps uh, measuring instruments steel tape steel scale dumbbell level screw gauges like that and the safety materials like helmet belt goggles gloves aprons etc now you see the erection of pipeline you have see before fab erection of a pipeline the pi pipe spools are to be fabricated because the pipe pipe will be of a straight piece and you need to connect your fittings with that so all these things cannot be done at site it has to be prefabricated at a fabrication shop then the erection has to be done so now the pipe spool prefabrication part we'll just we'll see a flow chart how it's being done once we receive the materials these are being uh, inspected as per the standard codes and standards and uh, it's taken up to the production line and the uh, fit up and welding activities are done it's being inspected by the qc inspectors and the painting of these pipe spools are being done and finally being transported to sites see now once the pipe spools are there and your other uh, aspects are ready you are going for an erection but once before uh, once we go for an erection <coughs> there should not be a stop it should be a continuous process so in, in order to have a continuous process you need to ensure that some erection preparations are being done earlier and you are ready for the erection these are some of the erection preparation has to be done before the start of the erection activities that you have to ensure that the proper availability of the tools that your columns and steel structures are on place and it's inspected and the, all the instruments required for the measurements and are being calibrated and it's be below the to within the tolerance limit and uh, you ensure that the verticality of the structures columns everything is done your inspection is done your material is ready for erection see that all these th things are done and the spools that are required for this erection are available in uh, which means the continuity is not being disturbed that you have to be ensured and uh, your uh, work point locations has to be ensured that it's ready for erection and uh, uh, foundation bolts are snug tightened after uh, after erection and alignment and uh, proper grouting has been already done for these structures and the lifting tackles which we use for erection are tested and are certified and all measuring and readings are registered properly in the log books and measurement books now you see here safety deduction budget determination time and discipline these are the main month main aspects of a construction site this now let's see the general sequence of an uh, erection that's why various uh, stages 
uh, your uh, material takeoff is done being done with the help of the drawings and the materials are procured isometrics are being weld mapped and the uh, fabrication is done and once the fabrication is done and the pipe supports, pipe supports are fabricated and kept ready for erection now you go for the installation of these pipes and the pipes are being doubled in cases the the pipeline may be a straight for a uh, uh, distance of uh, one kilometer or uh, 500 meters <coughs> so you have to just double the pipe and go on you don't need any fittings in between because the pipeline is straight so you do the doubling of the pipes and in case you need a fitting a bent connections are there or uh, some branches are there you do the erection of these fittings and this uh, spools are being erected and see that the pipes are in center and in level and the erection part is being done there then you go for the test packages the, this test packages is that you prepare uh, limits for the hydro testing that in order to ensure that the, the leakage in this pipeline so we have to test these pipelines through what with the medium um, we are using for testing is water that is hydro testing so hydro test packages are being prepared that's the documentation part is being done and we go for the hydro testing and once the hydro test is done and in case of any leakages we repair the weld joints and retest it the hydro test is being done as 1.5 times the pressure of the design pressure now the hydro test is being done the pipelines are uh, being erected hydro testing is done now you have to do the reinstatement reinstatement is nothing but you install all the components and ensure that the pipeline is being constructed as per the drawing you see that all the instruments are in place and all the uh, structures pipe supports everything is uh, on place and welding is perfect uh, not welding welding is inspection is being done during the construction stage and all these things are in place and ensure that the plant is ready for commissioning and finally we do the documentation part okay now the, we have seen the planning aspects we have seen the construction aspect and finally the quality control aspects in the quality control department what are the main activities or responsibilities of a QAQC department? They prepare a quality plan for the project and see that these inspections are done being as per the quality plan and the uh, quality control procedures and uh, raising of RFA. Okay. That is request for inspection. The inspe RFA is being uh, raised and uh, uh, EPCM consultant uh, may attempt the inspection based on the hold point or witness point whatever uh, being uh, planned as per the quality plan and once the quality inspection is being done we document it and submission of the final records to the owner uh, in the construction of a pipeline you follow a standard for construction it may be of American standard or an Indian standard or a British standard so we what you see on the screen is a various types of American standards which is being followed uh, in a construction pipeline uh, let's see uh, first one that is the American Society of Mechanical Engineers ASME so the in a construction uh, chemical plant or a refinery piping we refer to the ASME B31.3 that's a code being referred for a pipeline construction in chemical and refinery piping now these are the various codes so you see ASME B31.7 31.8 different types of piping will be covered there and what this uh, ASME B31.3 covers this covers the material design fabrication assembly erection examination and testing and what are the fluids involved raw, raw intermediate and finished fluids uh, petroleum products gas steam air water fluid fluidized solids and refrigerants these are covered in the ASME B31.3 and the industries covered will be chemical petrochemical refinery loading terminals natural gas processing plants and bulk plants okay now having said about all these things let's move on to the final part that's the career opportunities see now you have a BE degree or a ME degree this is only a basic qualification 
and you need a passport you can say uh, i'm not saying about the passport that is being used for a, that is a, as a government passport this i say that you need to enter an industry you need a reference these so you need some additional qualifications to uh, um, be, uh, to keep ready yourselves as a uh, for the industrial experience so you need to do some additional courses which may be required that we will see in the later part so now um, coming on to the qqc part what will be a uh, what will be role of a mechanical engineer in a construction site you will be, you will be designated as a uh, piping inspector or a welding inspector or a NDT specialist or a NDT coordinator or a in coating inspector but for a welding inspector uh, be engineer just cannot take up the role of a welding inspector because he has to know the various welding aspects and the techniques used there and what are the defects what you uh, witness in a weld so for that you have a, some specialized course that's what I was referring to as a passport for engineer to enter inside an industry. So okay, as a welding engineer, what will be your role? Or who is a welding engineer? Welding engineer will be responsible for the determination of the weld quantity in accordance to the codes and standards or specifications. Okay, now the welding inspector, what will be the additional courses or certification required for a welding inspector? You can say it's a CSOP 3.0, 3.1, or 3.2, and AWS. American Welding Society gives this certification. That's what we see as AWS. These courses can be, uh, training can be done in almost all cities in uh, major cities in India. You will find some institutes offering these courses. It will be for a period of uh, one month or one half month, and in the end, you will have some exams for that and uh, certificates will be uh, awarded to you on completion successful completion of these courses with uh, with the result pass result and this welding inspector uh, he will be he can get some job opportunities in energy related uh, industries uh, pressure vessels and uh, piping related uh, of fabricating fabrication companies in chemical industries and uh, in transportation sectors uh, aerospace automotive ship building railroad equipment likewise and NDT specialist who will be looking after the defects who will be examining the defects involved in a welding and the certifications required are ND level 2 and level 3 this can be taken up from the certifications can be taken up from these institutes which are available uh, in Chennai, Trichy. You have many institutions for this who will certify, who provide these certifications and train you. And coating inspector. Coating inspector will be involved in determination of the paint quality. That's the uh, painting being done on these pipes or Com piping components and uh, some certifications required uh, are either uh, NES level 2 or BIGAS these are some of the certifications for coating inspector and construction in construction department you a mechanical engineer will be deployed as a piping supervisor or a painting supervisor a mechanical supervisor a material control engineer or a pre-commissioning engineer or a piping engineer you have various roles in the construction part um, going on to the planning and project control you'll have a, a role to play as a project control engineer or a planning engineer based on the discipline quantity surveyor scheduler material control engineer system turnover engineer and some of the certifications or software skills required are ms project primavera ms office CAD center, uh, the AutoCAD, uh, and uh, some ERP softwares like SAP. This you can get uh, certifications from the CAD centers available <coughs> in major cities across the state. And other 
areas where uh, mechanical engineers are being deployed or various roles are procurement as a procurement engineer project coordinator material control engineer uh, design engineer estimation engineer or as a cost control engineer again on the certifications uh, which may help you in getting these jobs or ms office or an autocad uh, ERP softwares like SAP and uh, design and analysis engineers can go for some design and analysis softwares. Uh, I think I have given a, a brief about or a basics on the basics of uh, piping construction and various uh, our job opportunities in a uh, piping and piping construction industry and you can come up with your queries once again thank you all thanks for this opportunity thank you Very good morning to all the viewers. I feel honor and privilege in getting this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks on this special occasion. Every special moment comes to an end and this webinar session is not an exception to that. First and foremost, I thank God Almighty for making this event possible. On behalf of FXEC, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the honorable speaker, Engineer J. Anto Siroj Singh Sijo, Senior Planning Engineer. NSH Corporation, Saudi Arabia, for accepting our invitation in his busy schedule and delivering such a wonderful lecture on insight into piping construction in petrochemical industry. I extend my heartful thanks to the management, respected general manager development, Dr. K. Jayakumar, sir, and our beloved principal, Dr. V. Velmurgan, sir, for their moral support and tremendous guidance in conducting such a productive programs. Finally, I would like to place on record my sincere gratitude to Dr. Joe Patrick sir, head of the department, Dr. Jinatul Farida ma'am, Dr. I Nidhimanikam sir, Mr. Sex Flyman sir, Mr. Saranofmar sir and all our colleagues. Without their help and guidance, the program could not have been good grand success. Especially, I thank our student Mr. Jason for his technical support. This webinar was made successful only because of well-wishers followers and participants of the event. Once again, I thank you one and all. Stay home, stay safe.